Hey everyone, my name is Allison Eagle and I'm currently enrolled in the Business 399 class at Lords. What makes a leader? Because I'm going to school to be mid, uh, middle childhood for middle, middle childhood education. My two content areas are science and language arts and um, I feel that teachers lead throughout their whole career so I kind of took this class to learn more about becoming a leader and what makes a good leader and everything like that. Um, through some of the readings that we have read throughout the class, I feel they were very um, beneficial to re learning about how good leaders are and the characteristics they have. A lot of people have leadership potential, but they get leadership and management kind of confused. And that's kind of why I took it because being a leader, you think that's being a manager, but it's really not in that sense. Um, I was a manager at a fast food restaurant for four years and I recently just quit because I had to focus on school because I'm getting ready to graduate in May and I saw a little bit of not really leadership there and I think that there should be more leadership within companies. Um, I feel like people who carry out their jobs that they're asked them to do but they don't technically lead others usually you know you're telling people what to do and um you're not leading them you're just do this do that do this do that instead of hey why don't you do this this way because and um stuff like that so i think that being consistently trained and monitored is important and um so not really doing it better or faster, but getting it done the right way the first time. And you should lead them to how to continue on that path and how to go, you know, about their lives being a good, like, leader. And I see as teachers are leadership role models for students because, you know, they're the, consist they're the constant in the students' lives. They're always there every day. They see you every day. They look up to you. Um, and you should lead them in the right direction, the right path, so that they can continue being successful. Um, for my leadership case, I chose Wendy Kopp, and she's the CEO of Teach for America. And um, I chose her because I'm going to be going into education, so I feel that it's important for me, it was important for me to learn more about her because she's in education. Um, she the organization was one of her greatest achievements that she ever completed and for you know this for the the future of students around the whole world um, she went to Princeton and she wanted to resolve the issue of academic lows in poor rural areas and teacher shortages and so she took college graduates and with high achievement and put them in those rural areas to teach at those schools. They kind of go through like a program um, that they go, they get out of college and then they enter in this um, kind of like a leadership program for children and um, <clears throat> it opens the doors for children all over. So this, she began her first fight in 1989, and it's grown. Teach for America has grown for 23 years. She actually worked for a company called Teach for All. So it was kind of confusing when I was reading about her because she had Teach for America and Teach for All. And she worked for Teach for All, and then she designed her own. Teach for All is just in the United States. And then she designed her own company, Teach for America, that... Or no, Teach for All, I don't, Teach for All is um, all over the states, and Teach for America is just in within the United States. So she was very influential to me, and it was interesting to see um, the organization and how it expanded educational opportunities. Um, it gives children who are overlooked a chance to achieve to their true potential. And I feel that there's a lot of children that, you know, don't get their true potential because they, you know, they either drop out or they don't have the support at home. And it just, I feel that every student needs to have, you know, that 
foundation in their lives because everybody deserves a good education. Everybody deserves a chance. Um, unfairness within the education system is a problem, and I think we all need to work together to change things and create an education system that allows everybody to reach their full potential and achieve the same educational excellence. Um, so graduating seniors go into the company. They are, have five weeks of training within the company before they go off to some of the country's worst classrooms. So you can go to um, a classroom in the United States or you can go to a classroom in, you know, a different country. It's totally kind of where you choose to go and where they need you to go. Um, she knew what needed to be done, so she did it. And that's why I like her. She was a leader because she focused on what needed to be done and she got, she did it. She didn't, you know, rely on somebody else to motivate her to do it. She became a leader. She saw what the problem was. So she led others into fixing the problem. And I think that's what we need more people like that these days because she helped others achieve greatness and she achieved greatness herself. She, you know, became a CEO. She won awards. She wrote books. Um, so I think that, you know, it was a good, she was an successful leader because she was motivational and she was encouraging. And those are the characteristics that I feel that leaders really need to be successful. Um, I think that a lot of people don't understand you know, you have to put your own feelings and beliefs behind you and do what's best for the company. So maybe she, you know, she did what was best for others and she put her own feelings behind her and came up with this great organization to help others. She, you know, you always have to have an open mind and you know, you have to be open to hearing different ideas. And I'm sure, and that's how she was. She sent these students out to, she, they did their training, sent them st students out to different schools that needed help. And she probably asked them, you know, what's going on? What needs changed? Do you need more training? And I feel that training is the key. And a lot of people aren't successful. Where I worked, we gave people four days of training and it was probably four hours each and then it, they were sent on their own and then you know everybody would wonder why they didn't do a very good job well they don't have enough training so I think training is key so and it's successful you know it makes you successful um and they don't ever follow up on training so I feel that you know she followed up on her training and that's why her company was so successful because she was a good leader in all she had a coach. She was a coach. Um, she was a mentor. She was by your side and she aided in their success and her company's success. Um, social skills are definitely needed to become a good leader. And um, you need to build relationships and be successful with them before you can go anywhere else. And I feel that she built relationships and was successful in that. She. Um, was self-driven, motivated, and um, that was plenty of the character characteristics that you need to become a good leader. She was recognized as Time Magazine's top 100 most influential people, and that was very interesting to me because a lot of people overlook the education system and mostly are like focus on people in politics or you know movie stars and stuff like that as being influential and. I don't think those are influential in anybody's lives. I think that, you know, she's making it better for everybody in the education system. So she raised the bar for the system to become better. And I think that, you know, for being, a, she was a top notch leader because she was influential in people's lives. Um, she led it for 24 years. And she wrote, she did transition out of CEO, but she's still an active member within the whole board. And she wrote two books, which I still want to pick up and read. I just haven't had the time. Um, the one book is called A Change to Make History, What Works and What Doesn't, and Providing an Excellent Education for All. And then One Day All Children, The Unlikely Triumph 
of Teach for America and what I learned along the way. So I think those two books would be really good to pick up and kind of read about it. Um, so more about the approach that they do, which I think they their approach is good because then those um, recruits come out as successful leaders too. Um, college seniors want to become teachers in low-income communities and they commit to teach there for two years. So during the two years, they're called corpse members. Um, they train, they support you, um, they teach you how to, you know, become great teachers and leaders, and they auto, they always are increasing the opportunities that are available to you and your students and, you know, the life of everybody involved with hard work, perseverance, and a strong partnership. So they really focus on partnership within families, community, and I think that's what teachers, you know, sometimes teachers overlook, you know, building relationships and building partnerships with families and communities. And that's really what's important. Um, as teachers, you need to build relationships with everybody you're going to come into contact to. Because if you don't have good relationships with them, then it's just not going to be, you're not going to be successful. Because how can you, you know tell them what you want or tell them what you need or tell them how their student is doing if you can't, you know, tell them, um, like, have a strong partnership with them in, a co in communication. Like, communication is key, and I think that is what makes a good leader, too. Um, there are 10,000 corpse members within 50 urban and rural regions of the United States. Um, they have instructed more than 3 million kids in 34 different states and over the past 21 years. Um, it's just the lack of equality for children with low income communities isn't a reflection of their potential. So it's really not, you know, they, it's not their fault that they can't gain this awesome education because they don't have the funds or they don't have the support. And it's not fair to them because they deserve, you know, what everyone else deserves. They deserve a good education. And she wanted to be able to take on the responsibility of an important role that would lead those students into making a significant difference in the world today. Um, she wanted those students to have everything that they needed to be successful and not have, not be downgraded or I can't think of the word but you know not have what the student whose parents make millions of dollars um or not millions of dollars about hundred thousand dollars a year or this and this and that have the newest clothes have the newest shoes have the newest technology that's not what you know really is success makes you successful they these students just don't have the resources that they need, so she wanted to provide the resources for them. Um, she expanded their opportunities. Um, she's just a very, very, very influential person in my life, and I think that she could be influential in a lot of other people's lives. Um, I just look up to her because her corpse members that work within the training or the program they wake up each day determined. They want to make a difference within the classroom. Um, they just want to have their students like gain the fullest knowledge that they can and be successful. And um, she also, there also is after the two years, you are an alumni within the Teach for America program. So you can either continue to dedicate your lives to the fight or you can just, you still, you know, you can go on and get a job teaching elsewhere or, you know, do whatever you want to do next. Um, a lot of them stay within, the, stay within the program because they just see that it's, you make such a big impact on their lives and that you are the leader and the role model within them. So... If you leave, then they might not have that support, that leadership role model like they had, so they might not be as successful as they were. Um, so it's kind of sad that students who are born with within poor families, it kind of determines the kind of education they'll receive and their options in life. 
And that's just not what Wendy Cop wanted. She wanted those students. She didn't want their um, economical status to hinder their education and the help they received. So she recognized that there was a problem. So she took it upon herself to organize a foundation and provide children with an excellent education. Um, she was just... I think that, you know, a lot of people these days need to realize that leaders don't, you know, it's not just I want to do this and you're going to do it my way, you know, my way or the highway. It's not like that. Um, you need to be open minded. You need to take in everyone's opinion. You need to show that you understand that there's going to be problems along the way and you need to work with your team and your community and no matter what, no matter their background, no matter, you know, the device, the diversity, it's just, you know, um, you just have to look beyond that and keep going on the straight and narrow and continue what you want to do. Um, so it's just, it's a really strong, um, thing that I have because I, you know, did methods and I was in the classroom for two months and, you know, I saw potential in so many students, but they just didn't have that support system at home. And that's kind of, it just makes me sad. They have a support system at school, but, you know, us teachers can only give so much, you know, once we send them home, it's kind of up to the parents and it's kind of up to them to take initiative and some parents don't and it just makes their kid fail as you know their education fails and um, so there's just a lot of obstacles that you face becoming a teacher but you know you're it's just a passion that we have and there's something embodied within that just keeps us going and that we know that these students deserve the best and that's what Teach for America does. You know, these teachers face a lot of obstacles daily. Like, they face ob more ob obstacles that I probably haven't even seen within my experiences in the classroom. And nor will I probably never see them unless I work within these really low poverty classrooms. Um, but they persevered. They overcame them. I mean, this company has been going strong for a really long time. And, you know, 20 some years. So obviously they continue to fight and continue to um, be aware of the challenges and the um, problems that they these students face and they persevere, they overcome them and they just, you know, they they bring these talented leaders from every walks of life. They have plenty of teachers who they train and then send out into these classrooms for two years and they come back and they do trainings and they have the support system, they have the structure, they have the leadership potentials and they have everything they need right there at their fingertips to make them successful and to make these students be the best that they can. And it's just, um, it's, it's, it's great in my eyes. The, it's the largest um, single prepare for new teachers for schools in low-income communities, and it's the diverse pipelines of teachers and exceptional leaders in the field. Um, the leaders have a positive impact on the students, and the demand for the teachers who work through the Teach for America program is high. There are many new partners. There are schools who want to partner with them all the time within their organization because they see the impact that their teachers have on students and the community and that school. So they know that they're receiving the best um, education and trainings that they can in order to teach those kids and have the educational deeply within their system. Um, so it's just, it's just, it builds so many leadership, leadership between each and every corpse member, alumni, staff member. They just come together and strengthen the whole community within the school that they work. And in my eyes, it's just a very good program. And I think that it would be really great to kind of look into and maybe I could um, be involved within the program. I haven't really 
looked about applying, but I know on their website when I was doing research that you can apply and um, work for them and um, be one of their teachers in their school systems. And I think that it would be a great opportunity because, you know, I could get a job at a really low income school and not have the resources that I need to prepare myself and prepare my students to give them the best education. And this program, you know, gives you resources, tells you how to do it, what to do, and it's just overall great. And, um, you know, I think that leadership just, you have to be open-minded and you have to be you have you have to be firm and stand your ground but you have to know that there's other options and other people's opinions out there that you need to take into consideration you know plenty of times we tell people do it you're doing it wrong you're doing it wrong you need to do it this way you know this way or no way but you don't say you know maybe think about doing it this way because of this and but you know if you can get it made to work that way then that's fine but i just have this suggestion for you and it's just simply a suggestion but and i think that's what more people need to be like nowadays um i hope you enjoyed me talking about teach for america and what i feel that good leaders need to have and i uh, hope you have the rest good rest of your night and bye